Yeah, so how, how the story began, or my story began, was that I moved here some, yeah, nearly 30 years ago. So I come from an, a traditional agriculture background where driving the tractor and using all that diesel and, and, and being good at all that machinery was the way I was brought up. I remember the cows when I was a really young, so we stopped stopped milking when I was six or something like that, and then the cows lingered on for a while, and I could I could see as I as I grew up how the soils were were um, suffering from the loss of the cows, even though I didn't quite understand how and why that happened. So I put those things together later in life. So as we started Fjallvete uh, 20 years ago, people remembered the animals that used to be here. So it was such a, in such a short period of time, all the animals were gone. And the connection here in a tourism area, there was a knowledge about that the landscape was shaped by those animals, or it was more an intuitive thing that when you see them back in the landscape, you felt so good. That's even before they start to learn how beneficial the animals are in the landscape. So when we came with animals here, there would be no animals in the landscape for 30 years. Then coming here and then starting with animals again, it was a bit of a coming home feeling as well too. So somehow, if it's genetic or not, but it is to be with it around animals, it's really, it feels just, feels right. And then meeting with, with Savory Institute and, and the whole package of understanding how little I had I had ever learned about farming.
concept of holistic management is that we can we can offer a way of making use of the land that is viable and, and, and competitive that we didn't know of before. Since I am an optimist, I, I see how younger people find that interesting. The, the goal is not to be uh, taking care of my own farm on my own. That's no longer, that's not even you know, attractive. That used to be attractive. I don't have to collaborate with anyone. I just got me and my tractor and my farm. Young people realize that they can really do this. They can, they can go and they can just uh, shape landscape anywhere. Just go and, and start talking to people and, and get access to that land. Start somewhere, prove yourself and your capacity with your animals and then it will expand naturally from there. And collaboration, collaboration, that is like the in, the in thing. So that whole concept is, is changing everything. And, and suddenly we see this flow of young people being attracted, they want to do this. And they keep coming, and they don't come from a farming background. So that's something that I can see this movement of regenerative agriculture is making, enabling more people to be stakeholders. I've been asking myself, like, where do I feel most at ease and most happy? And that's why I'm doing this now. What I can see in, like, people who come to visit Fjällbete, that they are really blown away by the fact that this is a working place, but it doesn't feel like an office and a working place, and that it's more like friends doing stuff together and still works as a company. It's kind of freedom. And I believe that Fjällbete has to offer like a different point of view uh, and a point of view that speaks to a lot of people. This becomes more than a workplace, hobby, passion. It's like, it's bigger than that. Det finns, som ni hör, många riskmoment. Där finns det då en jättefin vall på höger sida som de kommer vilja gå till. För att öppningen till eh, hagen är ganska så här, lite som här, lite stenig och inte så mycket mat som de ser direkt. Så där blir det ett riskmoment att man måste se till så att de inte går upp dit utan att de går snett vänster in i hagen. Det ser jobbigt att få kickan. Så vi ska ta the flock. And we need quite a few people today. We would like to keep them centered and sort of in one line. Um, yeah, so we called some friends. A lot of dogs, a lot of people. It'll be fun. So the Adam is first to first. To actually call myself a sheep farmer and to like stand up straight 
because I, I feel that these animals have a bigger purpose than I ever thought that animals could have. There's so many levels to it. It's not only helping the soil and helping the land, it's also when you see people uh, just come in to pay a visit to help you move the sheep, for example, and they're like, they're, you can see this spark in their eyes and they're like, oh my God, can you do this? Uh, so it's like, it's not only helping the soil or helping the land, it's helping the people on the soil and land. These animals actually change the world and that is like, yeah, that's so cool. Uh, and to be a part of that, it's just, yeah, I feel proud about it, yeah. I think it was three years ago, this autumn, that I came to the, for the first time to this area. I couldn't really explain it logically why, why I needed to come. I don't know, it's just this deep, like calling from the forest, from the land, like something just called and and was resonating in me to make me make the moves to, to come here. This was the first time that I had come above the clouds and seen the sun and the blue sky. Um, you know, heard the, heard the birds singing and just felt that sort of peace and calm and clarity. Just a curiosity and a, and a great need to reconnect to the understanding of being nature itself and therefore letting that understanding guide all of my actions in how I eat and where I step and what tree I cut down and not cut down and how I talk to people about what we are and where we're living. A landscape that is for everybody, every body, being the cow and the goat and the bird and the insect and the like, all the bodies, having the landscape in such a way where it is best for for everyone. I see a great potential when we human beings in this village can cooperate. We're, we're misutilizing or, or under underutilizing great potential. Uh, we should start basing our food and our economy basically just off of our landscape and not importing so much from South America and the Middle East and, um, and North America. I think that we we have the capacity to be a gardener on this planet, to 
keep animals in a way that is regenerating the landscape. These, these gifts that the human being has can be given back to the landscape itself and to, to each other to, in our relationships and in our relationships with animals and, and with the land. Yeah, so this place is called Elsåstalen. Uh, it's a ski resort in Sweden. Uh, so we're in the actual ski slope right now uh, that they are grazing. It's this like doing proper meaning, like uh, like a job. It's it mm. doesn't feel like a job. It feels like a purpose. Yeah. To go out and move sheep is like the simple thing to take them to from one piece of grass to another but mm. still it's like oh you just enjoy it so much yeah like the physical work and the mental but i guess fjellbit is different in that way like we have a lot of discussions about how to do stuff and mm. why we are doing like we're doing yeah it's very stimulating <laughs> yeah for sure yeah yeah and it's i mean if if I if I look back at m the other jobs that I've been that I had in my life, it's like yeah I like this job because that was kind of a problem solving type of work and that was like the creative type and that was that was good because I got physical exercise and this one was good because I had to think like stuff like that and with this job it's like all of them yeah <laughs> in, in one, one day <laughs> and then also doing something meaningful and like that really makes a difference. Mm. Um, the last few years I've been on a journey. Wow. He was. Then I was searching for a way of helping the world towards a more positive direction. I was very worried for climate change. And during that time, I also encountered Fjellbitte through a course in holistic management. Like a lot of my family and also friends were like questioning it. They were like, is uh, agriculture the way to go? And, and especially also like these norms that only the stupid people works with agriculture. And I just graduated from high school with good grades and all my friends were going to university. So in that way I felt different um, for a while choosing this more practical way of, of making a difference. The mixture of interacting with animals, interacting with people and moving your body, doing physical work and having the view of the landscape and it's magical, really. Yeah, I, I could not imagine myself doing anything else than this. The meaning there is in life is the meaning you give it. And I believe meaning in life is something we need to feel to be healthy. And the key to meaning is responsibility. I can do something about it. I can reduce suffering. I can, I can make things more beautiful. One way of putting it is that 
I have so much capacity and privilege and, and, and opportunity to do good things. And that's my responsibility. My love to myself, to the people around me and to the land, that's like an obligation. If we want our kids to have a safe place to live in, what do we need to do to make that happen? Then I need to make sure that everyone is being looked after, everyone. With our ingenuity and our creativity, there are so many places where we can enable and support and help life on this planet. So we can really, we can obviously make this place greener and, and, and more like diverse than it has ever been before. And to me, that's just like step one. Regenerative agriculture is the natural step for mankind to take now. It just, that is the leap. That is like the leap in, in progress. And there's basically no other way. I am privileged to meet with constant flow of, of young people being very wise, being very clear on, on, they are on this quest. They are figuring it out and they are giving themselves good lives. It makes it easy for me to be optimistic. I do see a bright future uh, and I do see so much more life um, in the future and, and not only domesticated animals but like to for life to flourish to be um, a better version of them, themselves in both humans and also the birds and the bees and the everything uh, to be more alive. But I think there is hope and being part of this operation now has given me so much more hope than I expected like, to have any time in my life. <laughs> because I think many people are the people that I talk to, my friends and people who are not in this environment that much, they are kind of running out of hope. So maybe that's the, the fact that, that we are part of this movement, creating hope for, for the future. And now this perspective shift is just like popping up everywhere. And so now is the time where someone like me who didn't know anything about this two years ago, is coming in and I know now that I have to do this and I'm talking to people and they know that they want to do the same thing and we, through being that example, will be able to get more people and then we will be able to really do a lot more. It makes a big difference to have faith in the power of holistic management. Looking at our land, and understanding the ecosystem processes and all that, then comes the, the, the epiphany of, well, how many, how many cows does this land need to have in order to be vital? If regenerative agriculture is to vitalize ecosystems, it, it will take a number of animals to make it alive, to make it vital. And then if you just roll with that thought, how many people does it take? How many people need to be caretakers or give their care to this land for it to be as vital as it can be? Well, then suddenly there's a lot of people required.
realize that, that everyone is needed. It's all hands on deck to vitalize our ecosystems.